Bueno, egun hon guztioi eta eskerrik asko solasaldi honetara etortzeagatik. Lehenengo bi hitz euskeraz egingo ditut, e, baina solasaldi ingeles ez izango da, ze konbidatu bereziak ditugulako nazioarteko emakumea gaur gurekin, Europarrak, eta e, bakarrik esan e, bereziki ez, e, pozten gaituela gaur gobernantza eta generoa uztartzen dituen e, solasaldi txoa bantolatzeak etorkitzen eraikiz e, kongresuaren markoan plaza ireki honetan, eta... Mm, e, gaur gainera, emakumearen indarkeriaren kontrako nazioarteko eguna degunean, ez, ba, bereziki, ez, e, iruditzen zait e, garrantzitsua dela, horrelako solasaldi bat e, e, gertatzea, eta hasi baino lehen milesker, Eider Mendoza gobernantza diputatuari, eta nerea isasi, gibuzkako foraldundiko berintasun zuzendariari gurekin egoteagatik, plazerra da benetan, solasaldi apalonetan, ez zuek gurean izatea. Eta, bueno, ba, euskeraz gehiago egin gabe, ingelesera pasako naiz zuzenean, ba, gure solaskidek eh, ulertu diezadaten. Eh, thank you very, good morning and thank you very much for joining this conversation on eh, governance and, eh, and gender equality. It's an honor to host you here. We have um, uh, some great women, European women, uh, coming from a fellowship program, the break program coordinated by Impact Hub, that are joining us uh, to have a conversation on, uh, on the importance of uh, fostering the gender equality when introducing new governance models. And why we say new governance models, that we need new governance models. As Aranza Sulav, we are promoting governance innovation together and under the strategy of the Provincial Council's Etorkizuna Eraikis strategy that aims to build a collective answer to the current social challenges. Because we believe that only by reinforcing the networks between governments and civic society, citizens and social stakeholders, we are going to be able to address the complex challenges that we are facing today as society. So when, when we talk about governance innovation, it's about changing the way we, are, we have relationships with actors. The, it's about changing the networks with uh, citizens, with social stakeholders. It's about incorporating civic society into the new deliberation space. It's about creating new co-creation spaces and for that, we believe that we need new skills. We need to change the traditional structure of the public administration, which in my opinion has been very vertical, hierarchical, and I would say masculine. So uh, we believe that uh, women uh, have, um, play, can play a key role in changing and articulating the new relationships and the new networks between actors that are necessary to address the current challenges. So, we, have, um, we are proposing a set of questions uh, to you, but please, like, feel free anybody to take part in the conversation and uh, make any comments if you, if you would like to. But the idea is to have a conversation and an open dialogue on the questions that uh, we are like putting on the table. So, uh, Jonah is going to guide the conversation. So, many of the questions are very linked one to each other. But uh, from your perspective, they are, well, maybe I didn't, I didn't say it enough. Um, these great women come from different parts in Europe and they are visiting our region uh, for the last couple of weeks. Uh, four weeks, yeah. So they are entrepreneurs, and they, have, they are running their own businesses, and they are uh, like showing that women can be powerful, and they can like run great projects. So it's important for us to have them with us, uh, to have this dialogue with you, and to know your perspective. Not necessarily an expert perspective on governance, but yes, as a key actors and a very active women when running businesses and activities to address the complex challenges, each one in their field. So your perspective and opinion are very interesting 
and great for us. So, uh, Jonne, maybe I, I hand over to you, and then you can maybe start like from the first question. And the idea is to build up a conversation and a dialogue among you, girls, but also with other participants in the session. So, thank you. Thank you, Nayara. So from our side, we wanted to suggest a set of questions to kick off the conversation, but please feel free to add, um, or if anyone has any other questions, we're also happy to weave them in. Uh, there is no like a rigid structure that we will follow. So the um, I'll read aloud the first three questions and first hand it over to you because we're looking forward to hear your reflections on on this set of questions. And the first one, are, the first one is what links the exist between gender and different models of governance. So the idea to dive deeper in those different models of governance. And what, what is the perspective that gender equality can bring into those new models of governance? That's a very good question. So when we say, when we talk about governance, the approach that we are uh, focusing on in Aranta Solab is collaborative governance. And when we talk about collaborative governance, there is a public institution that is involved in that. But we also understand there are citizens, organized society that will be part of that governance itself. So there is a public go um, body component in it. Yeah, yeah maybe, to, uh, maybe to build on that is like uh, what decision makers are. Uh, is in the governments, in public institutions. So the idea is to involve like actor, different actors, entrepreneurs and citizens in public decision making. And for that, there needs to be a shift in the way we have relationships with the civic society. Yeah. So the, the second question being linked to the first one is where are the keys for society to change the models of relationship with institutions? That would be the relationship between citizens and public institutions. And what can gender equality contribute to the transformation of our model of relationship with those institutions? So over to you. Um, and looking forward to hear initial thoughts, reflections from your own experience on, on these new models of governance. Well, I'm actually, can you hear me? Okay. I'm actually, my name is Melissa, and um, I live in France, but um, I'm from New Mexico, so I have a, an American perspective. I've been in Europe for two years. And the first thing that came to my mind is the things that have changed in the U.S. in the last few years is having more um, women in our government and also indigenous women in our government. There was the first... Um, Congresswoman from Alaska just came into the government yesterday. We have the Secretary of the Interior is um, a New Mexican Native American woman. She is a matriarch in her community. She brings, she, um, brings rituals into her work and she brings, um, she brings a perspective that's very, very different to all of the native lands in the United States. So there is a movement of power that is changing right now with Native American women rising up. And not only that, but even in Europe, bringing in um, an indigenous global perspective that is changing um, the way that I think governance is seeing in different sectors. For example, the sector I work in quite a bit is with NGOs. So um, bringing that more um, focused, um, it's not only feminine and, and, and woman energy because they have another word for it, it's called um, two-spirit, so it's gender equality within the LGBTQ community. And it is, it is really changing things, I think, from many different perspectives, but I think the, the models are changing. I don't want to talk in, anymore, but the models are changing by bringing in what Flavia is very, um, she's an expert in is uh, gender diversity and inclusion from different sectors of society. And so I know this is coming from outside the scope of this European conversation, but it's the perspective that I think can be very interesting in a country that was colonized and, and, and Native Americans did not have a voice or starting to have a voice, particularly with women rising up. Curious to hear, um, sorry, your name was 
Flavia. Yeah, curious to hear, uh, Flavia, because you, Melissa also mentioned your name. So curious to hear what is your perspective on that as well. Is, is this okay? That's a no. Yeah, okay. Um, so yes, my name is Flavia. I'm Argentinian and I live in Germany. So I've been in Europe for almost six years. Um, and I work uh, on diversity and inclusion, but with um, an angle on masculinity. So we live in a patriarchal uh, society that has put men at the top, but like in a way that like what I believe is necessary as well is uh, challenge the status quo from the gender perspective, including men. Um, not excluding them, but asking them how they can change and how can they be part of this change. Um, they still, in many cases, have power and the way that they embody that um, really makes a difference in how things go. And so if we bring them in instead of um, yeah, pushing them away, um, they also can bring about the change that we want and include other people. But if they are not aware of the effects that the society as it is uh, has on them, it's really difficult to, to have them be involved and engage in that conversation uh, because it, for most of them it works as it is. So how can we work with them to see how it also negatively affects them and affects others? And how can we free them from those uh, gender stereotypes that are placed on, upon them so that we can all have the same playing field? Um, I don't know much about governance particularly, um, but for me, the question is always like uh, putting equity at the center. And so who are those that are at the edges? Who are those that are not uh, coming to vote or that are being participatory? Um, and starting from there. So starting from the, the edges and bringing those in, because when we do that, then everyone else will be included. Uh, and also from a non-binary gender perspective, right? So what are things that the government and the institutions can do in order to bring those people, understanding why they're not being participat uh, participative um, and really changing from there uh, so that, yeah, they feel heard as well. Um, hi, my name is Mariah. I'm also, uh, I'm, I'm from Germany actually and I live there <laughs> and um, uh, I think it's a very interesting perspective from our country as we had uh, many years a chancellor who is a woman who is still a woman and um, but she's not the chancellor anymore and so we had a very let's say funny conversations when that changed uh, a lot of memes uh, of course in on the internet where we said um, so in German, you have the same as in Spanish with um, uh, with the um, difference in how you call the job uh, for a woman or for a man. So um, we uh, always talked about Bundeskanzlerin, which is the female version of it. And there were people saying, I refuse to call now the new chancellor, the male one, Bundeskanzler, which is the male, because I have always said Bundeskanzlerin. So that was like the fun behind it. But I think um, to get it to the high level, uh, why is this link between gender and governance so important? Because public institutions and governance are also a role model. They are public. So if we want that uh, the 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 actually the the society trusts governance, it has to be. Um, an active a participation and a role model of what happens in society too or where society has to move to. And I think that's a very important link between those two. Hi, I'm Eva. I'm a Spanish, but I live in France. And uh, for me, having uh, both uh, genders or all the genders in governance, in fact, is the minimum but it's still poor because it's not about a gender but about all the feminine and 
masculine uh, qualities that uh, we need uh, to bring in. It's not enough if a woman gets in, in power and uh, stays in a masculine patriarchal uh, line of work. We need all and we need to, to be free to everybody express all those qualities and make them part of uh, governance. Uh, otherwise, we won't uh, really advance and find uh, new models. Hello, my name is Hannah. I'm from Australia, also part of the break. My experience with governance is mainly around corporate governance in cybersecurity and IT security. So I actually consult with firms on how they can develop better governance around this area like data protection, how to be better secure. And a lot of my dealings has been there's def a definite gender, you know, 2% or no, 5%. So I was in a department meeting with 5% women and then the rest men. So that definitely that's... I mean, it, it also goes with the relationships being built with other, with CEOs, executives as well, because it's usually the effort is, as you know, top down is you know what was the case with cybersecurity. So it would be interesting to see how it goes with some more grassroots efforts, like different technologies in place, like for example, Twitter with Elon Musk buying Twitter, and then there's this kind of grass grassroots type movement with having servers being developed, and you know, you run it yourself. But then it's people with technical skills do that, so there's still a gap that I can see. In, yeah. So uh, thank you everyone for those great contributions. And maybe like connecting to a comment that Eva made, it's not about just uh, ensuring gender equality, but we need to bring in new skills. Uh, like uh, it's the quality of relationships. So, what about? Could you please share on your view uh, which are the skills and the specific characteristics that maybe women can bring in into the institutions? Um, so, which are those? Well. Uh more listening and less imposing, uh, a more lineal, not uh, up and down uh, a scale no, of uh, power in which there is a space uh, for others. Perhaps more practicity about what is uh, needed and how to put it in place. Uh, we need to discover it. We need the space to be there to discover what uh, really we can put in the table, I think. Yeah, and for me, I think it, it also has to start with um, young people and pipelines. So, so really empowering young people that they want to be part of organizations that, that may not look like them and start to change them from within. So I think a lot of what I was describing going on in the United States has been, for me, um, a woman in her 50s who's never really seen um, these women from uh, Native American cultures in power for, as role models for the young women is completely changing things. And there are more entrepreneurs who are um, Native American and indigenous than I've ever seen. And that has to do with role models. So I think the skills, a lot of those skills is about networking, connecting, sharing knowledge, and sharing knowledge through mentorship of younger people, but also sharing intergenerational knowledge with um, these powerful women leaders that exist all over the world, from the Maori people to the people um, in the Sami in Sweden, that there's so much that we can learn um, looking at what has worked over time, not only with governance, but with climate change issues and with issues around leadership and um, working in the environment and saving you know, the rainforest. It's, it's really quite clear that that societies that have given, that have stronger um, uh, indigenous values um, and, 
and empowerment, it, they really do make a difference and have ideas that really can change the world. Maybe one more thing to add, uh, what I think is extremely important, what also Flavia mentioned with uh, her work is it's not only the skills bringing something new to organizations or a new leadership uh, skill incorporating and uh, bringing it to life in an organization but uh, the man wanting this change and supporting this change and supporting women um, and all other genders as well so this whole openness is so important so that it's not only that we're talking about women and how women can improve it but how we all as humans in one organization working for the same goal um, can work together and support each other. It's interesting that um, you have brought out a lot of like the different so like uh, elements, right? To build those capabilities, to build those new governance models. You have talked about relationships. You have talked about trust, uh, empathy. So like shifting to more like horizontal models. Um, and I also like taking your last comment. Uh, it's true that a lot of the time we put a lot of the focus into women and what women like can bring in or what women can change. And it's interesting how you have shifted that perspective to say, how all, right? Is it, this is something, an effort, like a collective effort, and it's everyone uh, needs to be there to do that, that transition. Um, but we also, we wanted to reflect on what is it like that women can bring in, right? Like, they're, like that focus has been here, uh, mainly uh, women. Uh, what is it that we ask can bring in, in terms of like skills, capabilities, um, in terms of like uh, activating that transition that it's that is needed, and I want to also open it if there is any questions. We don't want to take Nayara and I take on like all the this opportunity to ask all the questions. I don't know if anyone, other participants want to ask any other questions. No, if no, we'll continue with our set of questions. Yeah, okay. So uh, Naya put a focus on, on the skills questions, uh, but then we also wanted to dive deeper and uh, you are women entrepreneurs and being an entrepreneur requires a very specific set of skills, very specific set of like being in the world as well. Um, and we believe that there is a lot of to learn from uh, people like yourselves. So we were wondering if we're thinking about gender and governance from women entrepreneurs' perspectives, what is it that you believe that we can learn from, from you? What is it that we can take from entrepreneurial uh, skills, mindsets, um, ways of doing that you have very embedded in the way that you approach your businesses, that you approach your everyday challenges? What is it that we can uh, learn from that um, when we're talking about governance and gender? I can start with connecting to what I said uh, just before is um, although I mean yes it needs a lot of uh, braveness and determination uh, to be an entrepreneur but um, and that's also what we have been talking about now uh, during the break um, you can't do it alone you need support you need the right environment um, or else you will just be very lonely and you can still do it but it's not half as fun so um, this is extremely important and then we're linking it back to governance so that you have the right environment to be able to do that as an, uh, as an entrepreneur, as a woman, that you have institutional support, that you have financial support and that it doesn't make a difference whether I'm as a woman, as an entrepreneur, uh, trying to find financing for my startup or whether uh, it would make a difference if I were a man. Um, and I think this is something uh, which... Uh, is important to listen to, uh, especially for, for public institutions to be, because I think there are a lot of women with great ideas that are not taking the step because they are afraid because of the circumstances, because of the risk that it takes. Um, and if you have the right environment, um, personally, professionally, and institutionally, you can do it. And I would say that there are, um, 
I don't know specifically in Spain. I know Impact Hub, Hub has some and Natural Clima has some, and I know you're involved with supporting entrepreneurs, but finding that community within your community, wherever it is, um, to help that idea come to fruition, because I think the beginning can be challenging. Each, each part of building a business can be challenging, but when you're in connection with other people, you can find the answers. And, and in this program, we have 280 women that have been in communities all over Spain, um, having that kind of not only camaraderie with each other, but they're also learning with mentors, and they're also kind of sharing best practices with each other. So I'm just sort of reflecting more on, on what Mariah's talking about, is, is building that community is essential. And then also bringing that, I mean, I, I've been thinking a lot about Iran and, and what the women are doing there to rise up and risking their lives to rise up to have agency and to have some say in their own lives. So, so we can, uh, f finding ways to support other women who are in these challenges where they're really trying to take um, a step into um, a life where they can have choices, I think it's essential that we support other women because they can't do it alone either. There might be a question. May, may I add to that? Like, uh, or do I have to only ask questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. It. I have written it down, but please let me know if I'm talking for too long. I'm not going to talk too long. <laughs> but um, I just want to start off saying that I really believe in having quotas uh, when we elect governments because I don't believe in group of leaders that do not look like the people they lead. And I think that it's not just enough to have women um, because a Caucasian woman has a completely different experience than minorities. And I am, I'm Kurdish, like speaking of the people in Iran, it was the ind indigenous people in Iran, like the Kurds who started this revolution. Um, I think that uh, like these people are against hijabs, but if you have a like with all the respect, but there are some white feminists who are against hijabs. But we see that in modern times, um, or in the West at least, women have changed the reasons why they wear it. Um, and so therefore I think that a hijabi woman should also, or like someone who understands it should also be in, in that government to justify it. Um, as well as queer people, like trans women who um, are not accepted i don't know what it was like other places but in norway uh, during pride they had this challenge of feminists of all color being against trans women being in the in the in the uh, what do you call it in the march which is ridiculous and then it leads to w what women need to do to be regarded as leaders so i became a ceo and um, something I started to do in the beginning was that I had to change, I started to change how I dressed, uh, what I wore, because I had men interrupt, I had one man interrupting me during my pitch to say that he was staring at me because he thought I was beautiful. I had one who um, uh, messaged me late at night after our meeting to ask me to go t and have dinner with him. And it's like, these are people who are, 20, 30 years older than me. Um, now I've, you know, being an entrepreneur, you understand you get so tired, now I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so I wear whatever I want. But it's, it's that thing of like, they want you to be masculine. It's some stuff like Jordan Peterson says, they want women to um, use what we regard as like suppression techniques, interruption, ridicule, igno ignoring, um, not giving people the right information so they seem ignorant, all of those things. Um, that was basically it. But it's, uh, can I also add one more thing? <laughs> um, what Having women as leaders will also change our, the way we speak because it's not enough with actions, it's also the way we speak. So I did my dissertation on translations of plays and something I learned was how uh, the word bridge in German is feminine. 
Yes? In Spanish, it's masculine. So they asked, uh, they did this social experiment, they asked German people to describe a bridge, and they asked Spanish people to do the same. And the Germans, they said, it's beautiful, it's sensual, it's, it's lovely. Whereas the Spaniards said, it's strong, you know, it's very, very important, like, um, it, it holds everything up. All of those things we describe as feminine and masculine. And, um, uh, like, yeah, and, and so it's like my parents, they want me to have an equal life, but the language is very sexist. So what my dissertation taught me is that a challenge is you cannot translate culture, but you can translate sexism. Thank you. Yeah, I think you have brought very um, important elements, and in terms of like a language as well, how much uh, we share, right? Or how much we, um, even in the subconscious, how much we can communicate with the words that we use or we don't use. So very important. Eva, I think you wanted to say something before. Um, Oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's not only men, men and women. It's about uh, all the values uh, together and learning not to to be all men and women. And uh, if we can't bring women this uh, to, the, to to the arena. We are, we are not doing all. Thank you. I think adding to what you were saying about quotas, um, something that I've been thinking about because my, uh, my background is also working in uh, networks, like global networks, and how to make it in a, um, democratic decisions uh, where everyone on paper has a voice but then who shows up, who's there, who feels hurt is different. And something that I think can help with what you were saying is that the government should look like the people that they're uh, working for. So if they actually represent, like we have census, we know how our communities look like, how about the government act actively represents that and works so that it looks and it, um, yeah, it, actually represents the people that they're working for and not just part of the society which is which is what is happening in most of the countries right now um, yeah that's something that I, I just um, thought to thank you Eta gaztelaraz egiten balin badet? Ez da ere, bale. Euskeraz egingo dut? Egun ondan hoi, eh? Enaiz gai gaztelaraz behar dan bezala itzeiteko, eta beraz euskeraz egingo dut, eta gero itzulpen gintzea egiteko eskatuko dizu ez zuei. Izugarri guztatu zait, gaurkoan komentatu dezuten guztia, eta gainera ikuspegi oso desberdinak txertatu dira gaurko diskursoan. Pixka kokatzearen edo, ni aldundiko ordezkaria naiz, gobernantza diputatua naiz, eta autagai naiz urrengo hauteskundetarako. Eta kasu honetan, aukera gehien duten emakumeak hauteskundek irabazteko, alderdi politiko nagusietan, Emakumeak dira. Lehenengo aldia izango da, irabazten duenak irabazten duela, baina gaur egun dakigunean onarrituta, emakume bat izango da, lehenengo aldiz diputatu nagusi gipuzkoan. Nikunet hori oso berri ona dala. Deri askotan esaten zait zerbait, eta da emakumeen artean ere estilo desberdina daude, gobernatzeko estilo desberdina daude. Horrako hau adibidez Jacinta Ardern, adibidez Margaret Thatcher, edo Angela Merkel, iruak oso desberdina dira, baina badaukate gauza bat amon komunean, eta da, danak emakumea diala, eta danak gutxituak izan garela, politika gintzan ere. Eta nik ustet horrek adirazten duela, edo hori da gure zaugarri nagusia, eta zeuek aipatzen zenuten, ez? Ez dena ikusten, ez da esistitzen. Eta emakumeok, emakumunan daukagun hori, estilo desberdinak eukiarren da ez gerala esistitu. Eta beraz, guk ordezkatzen degula gizarte osoa eta 
gizonezkoek ordezkatzen dute gizarte oso bat, nun emakumeak apenas parte hartu duen agintean. Hori bai da ezaugarria makomun badaukaguna, naiz eta gero, gobernatzeko garaian desberdinak izango geran. Margaret Thatcherrek estilo bat zaukan, oso autoritarioa, eta jacinta arderneek zeganda berrian oso desberdina ez. Estilo era bat desberdina, baina biak emakumeak izan da, politika egintzan era bat gutxituak. Eta bai uste dut horretan pauso bat eman behar degula, alegila, ikusten ez dena, ez balin bada, existitzen ez dago ordezkaritzarik, beraz, emakumek ez dute inoiz pentsatzen aukera hori eukiko dutenik. Eta noski, aipatzen zen uten bezala, ez dugu, ez gera inoiz ordezkatuak sentituko baldin, eta beti gizonezkoa baldin badiragu, ez dugu ez errepintatzen, ez? Bueno, egin ditu zuten ekarpenak oso oso aberazgarriak izan dira, ze ez da bakarri generoaren aipatu, beste hainbat kontu ere aipatu dia, eta benetan eskertzen dizuet ze ekarpena oso balio garria izan zait. Eta jakin nahi nuen eazuek ze ikuspuntu daukazute, erne estilo zea horretan, alegia, emakumek ere estilo desberdina dauzkagula. Baina, ama komunean daukaguna da hori gutxituak izan garela politika gintzan ere. Haber ze nola ikusten dizuten, hori galdetu nahi nizuek. Eta horretik eskertu noski. Did you get the translation? Yeah. Okay. So please. Oh, you need to get a translation. Yes. Yeah. You got the translation? In Spanish. In Spanish. Spanish. So maybe we can do. Oh, yeah, I can do. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Aider. No, no worries. Yeah, thank you. So uh, she's um, uh, she's currently the governance deputy, but she's. Uh, She's, got, uh, she's like the candidate uh, to become the next head of the provincial council uh, in the region. So, and she said that uh, this is the first time that all the candidates are women, while well, the major party, uh, political parties candidates are women, so it's going to be the first time that we're going to have a, head, a woman head of the provincial council. So uh, she said that uh, we've been underrepresented women have always been underrepresented. So we've always been a minority. So it's, we haven't been represented, so it's important. It's difficult the society see a, a, refl a reflection in the government because we have never been there. And then she also pointed out that we have had uh, women leaders throughout the world uh, with a very different styles, like from Margaret Thatcher to uh, Jacinda Arden. I mean, both are great women leaders, but the styles, the governing styles, one is more authoritarian and the other one is more horizontal. So uh, she was asking you what you think about the leadership and the style theme, this combination, and what's your view on that? I mean, of course, I'm, I'm speaking from the American perspective, and it is, it is unbelievable right now, the, the, the difference in the leadership of different women in the government. So they're the more radical, open, um, feminist, uh, women of color perspective. And right now, um, we have a few people in government who are very, very much the opposite, right wing, taking the line of Trump, um, a completely different perspective, and I think, I think there's just in the U U.S. right now there's such a heavy divide between the two sides, and so um, to have a, the large representation of one of that the more um, progressive and open and democratic leaders be very high up in government, Deb Haaland. Um, her perspective is is very wide and open and feminist, and yet we have another uh, can, Taylor Green, who has the opposite, and it really is quite difficult for I think the public to really see these two sides because they're completely different, and it and it not only does is the government divided, but the society is divided, and it it is it is very difficult to see. Um, maybe to speak from a from a business perspective, what I can see, um, especially in in Germany, in the let's say, yeah, startup bubble uh, with more uh, female uh, leaders and um, how they lead their businesses, but also um, if we look at I don't know uh, the leaders in Finland and New Zealand bringing this new style um, of, for my taste, making 
leadership or governance something more personal um, and and this allows um, more or let's say easier identification also for um, Ident yeah, Id identifying with the leader because then there is a creation of trust, and I think this this personal and emotional, which again I think is sometimes a little bit difficult word to use um, in terms of a female leader style because. Um, I have also experienced that sometimes like uh, women's and emotions is very easily connected to being well too too emotional right but I translate um, emotions with personality and um, this creating an environment in trust in organizations which can also be translated into public institutions and the active listening and participative uh, way of working together uh, on any level. Uh, I think something also that has, for me, has to do with uh, the different styles even in women on leadership um, is, as you mentioned, the lack of um, representation. So because most of our lives we've seen men leaders um, that's what we think is the only way to be a leader. This is the the way that we actually get into power or uh, are respected. And allowing that to change um, and disrupting that is... Um, it will always bring some backlash um, because it's challenging the power, it's challenging the status quo. So what is... If we do this, now what will be next? And so um, I see that, like with Margaret Thatcher being more of a like a traditional masculine leader, while uh, Hacienda Arden was like embracing um, what you meant, uh, what you mentioned um, herself and like how she wants to be and how she is, and then you know just going with it, no matter the the backlash that uh, or like the yeah the the what people would think it, it is is this the right way to be a leader or not? Like, it's just like the way it is and then people will like it and people will not like it. Um, and just accepting that, um, I think that's that's disruptive and that's a good thing. But uh, I, I just remember something that uh, Carol Gilligan said uh, on the, the film. Um, democracy relies on equal voice and equal voice means that other people rather not only men will have uh, the opportunity to be heard and that's dangerous because it uh, challenges power as it is don't like it's not exactly what she said but something like that <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember the exact words but like uh, i think that's why we see so much backlash and like what's happening with the right wing um, rise not only in the in the US but in Europe throughout Europe as well. Um, there's something that feels dangerous um, of challenging that. So thank thank you everyone. I think we have like five minutes to go, three minutes to go. So maybe uh, I would like to close with a very last question and uh, taking. The Ah, okay. Ah, vale, vale. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. 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 She has a question. So, yeah, she has a question. So, please. Bye. Cacho. Eh, Nick, escuncha mundo tinator. Orre de gobernanza existitzenda. Eh, guk escola mundo unduan. Iruitz era vilcenditugu. Inclusioa. Hay pacheracoan. Bat. Presencia. B. Partai de Cha, Iru, Lorpenak, y Kaskunzak, Eskunzan, Politikan, Lidergoa. Baña, e, desafección político a Dagoen Garayan, Gasteak, Eta Popula Kunzak, Erakunde Formalak, Gero, Eta Urrutiagua, y Kusten, Dituste, guques, baño guisartean, bai. 
hori arazo bada. Beraz, ezaugarriak oso importanteak dira, baina uste dut eta zurekin nago, ze izkuntza erabiltzen ditugun eta ze testu inguru sortzeko gaitasun dugun dela importantea. Adibidez, orain, gu gaude Euskaraldian. Zein da erronka testu inguruak sortzea? Gorria, urdina, berdea, bai? Por cierto, gaur arratxaldean zazpitan denok manifara. Bai? Hau hil, itzuliko dutola puntu garrantzitsuak beraiek ere jasotzeko. Tamen zer ez usatu, eh? Ez dut alima dute zerbait ondo esaten edo usatu, baina... She was talking, she comes from education and she was explaining how they use three words, three key words when they talk about these topics. The first one is presence, the second one is participation, and the third one is achievement. She was also reflecting how there is a growing disaffection between citizens and public institutions and there is a growing distance towards public institutions we uh, people, citizens, they see them like farther and farther away. Um, and she was reflecting also how important it is, and she was agreeing with you, on how important it is uh, to reflect on language, on the language that we use, and on the uh, conditions or the uh, context that we can set up. Um, and that's, as you know, and we reflected last week in Arantzazu, uh, we are wearing our... Uh, tax because of the um, the Euskaraldia. Um, so here for us, as you know, Basque um, and language is a very, very important conversation. And she was also inviting you to go to the uh, to the demonstration that will be this afternoon at 7. So everyone needs to be there at 7. So uh, thank you very much, everyone. I think we are done. So I just, I would like to close this great conversation. I think we could stay here for, for longer and for hours. So thank you very much for your great contribution for joining us in this dialogue on uh, gender and governance. Thank you everyone for bringing in these new and great perspectives. Thank you Eider Nerea for being with us today. And I think as some of you said earlier, uh, we cannot do it alone. So let's join forces, and I'm sure it's going to be our future as women. So thank you very much, everyone.